On September 30, 2015, the Auction House Kunka is going to sell the Numitor collection featuring coins and medals of the Archbishopric of Salzburg in auction sale 268. They provide an illuminating insight into the history of this important ecclesiastical province from early modern times until the secularization. The year is 1500. The Imperial Diet adopts the execution order in Augsburg as the first empire-wide prosecution of criminals. Pedro Cabral sets his foot on Brazilian ground, and the French expel the Sforza from Milan. 1500 would be a suitable date to let the early modern period begin, but the boundaries are blurred in general history as in monetary history. A telling example is this coin of Leonard of Koitschak. He held the office of Archbishopric of Salzburg between 1495 and 1519. Both Leonard and his coin ranges somewhere between the medieval and modern times. The obverse of the coin refers to the medieval tradition depicting the patron saint, St. Rutbertus, with the salt barrel and the crozier. Rutbertus was the first bishop of Salzburg. He was of noble descent and was thus granted the right to missionize by the Duke of Bavaria. Of course, he needed a central headquarter. He found it in a small town called Uvavum that had evolved around an ancient monastery. Due to the fact that Rutbertus funded his headquarters with the revenues of his salt trade, the Uvavum soon became Salzburg. Numismatists believed for a long time that the depiction of Rutbertus harked back to an idea of Leonhard of Koitschak. Then, however, the Munich coin cabinet acquired a unique gold gulden showing a similar depiction. Thanks to the small family crest below the monastery's coat of arms, the specimen was identified as a coin of Sigismund of Volkersdorf. Sigismund was in office between 1452 and 1461. He was the last medieval archbishop to strike coins in Salzburg and the first one to choose Rutbertus for his coin images. The auction house Kunka is proud to offer the second known specimen of this important coin type. Let us get back to Leonard of Koitschak. On some of his coins, he presents himself as a Renaissance ruler with his own portrait. The reverse depicts the famous coat of arms with a turnip. This turnip refers to an amusing story telling of young Leonard living a somewhat dissolute life. When he was visiting a conservative uncle, a peasant, Leonard is said to have infuriated him so much that his uncle threw a turnip at him. According to the legend, Leonard improved his behavior and borrowed the turnip for his coat of arms. As a matter of fact, Leonard was of noble birth and had no uncle who cultivated turnips. Instead, the turnip had been a part of the family crest for one and a half centuries. His successor, Matthew Lang of Wellenberg, had a different background. He belonged to an Augsburg-based Burger family and was the protege of Emperor Maximilian I. It is hardly surprising that most of the dyes for the gold and silver coins of the archbishop were created by Ulrich Ursenthaler, the emperor's most gifted die cutter. Matthew Lang of Wellenberg was a highly regarded diplomat, which also ensured him the patronage of the pope who appointed him Cardinal Bishop of Albano in 1535. This double guldener commemorates his status elevation. The legend on the obverse refers to the office of Cardinal of Albano, while the reverse depicts the galero, the ecclesiastical hat with the tassels on both sides. John Jacob Kuhn of Balassi assumed office in 1560. He was a keen supporter of the Counter-Reformation, Likewise, part of his policy were the magnificent coins that focused not on him as an individual, but on his office as archbishop. No portrait is shown on the obverse of this twelve-ducat piece, but the family crest featuring the ecclesiastical hat. The reverse shows the patron saints of the archbishopric. We see Rutbertus with the salt barrel on the left-hand side, and Virgilius on the right, his arm resting on a church model. St. Virgilius had been Bishop of Salzburg in the 8th century and had erected the first cathedral, which is why he is always shown with the church model. John Jacob Kuhn not only fought the Protestants, but the plague as well. It raged in Salzburg between 1571 and 1582. This terrible disease can be linked to the revival of an earlier subject, which we find on a 1571 double dollar. It depicts St. Radiana. 
she became part of the Salzburg coins imagery with Matthew Lang of Wellenberg. He consecrated a church in her honor and had coins struck which illustrate her martyrdom. The saint is attacked by two wolves and suffers severe injuries from which she will die within three days. In 1587, Wolf Dietrich of Reitenau was elected Archbishop of Salzburg. At roughly the same time, a war broke out in the most remote corner of Hungary, with the House of Habsburg and the Ottoman Empire as belligerents. Wolf Dietrich supported Habsburg. He funded a small army that embarked to likewise engage in the war, but returned to Salzburg in 1593 without having fought a single battle. That did not stop Wolf Dietrich from praising the soldiers' efforts for the empire. Every participant in the war was given a coin, struck specifically for that occasion. It depicts a tower buffeted by the wind, as well as the Bible quotation, In the hope of God, I shan't be deceived. The humble ranks were given a thaler. The superior ranks received a gold coin in the weight of several ducats. The archbishop had sent such coins likewise to the coin cabinets of those European rulers he wanted to be friends with. The underlying idea was to make them aware of his commitment. We don't know who the recipient of this ten ducat tower coin actually was, but he certainly was a man of high rank. In 1628, Archbishop Paris of Lodron consecrated the completed Salzburg Cathedral with an elaborate ceremony. The Baroque celebration took eight days. It started on September 24th with the solemn transfer of the reliquary to the new building. This coin provides a glimpse of the magnificent procession. We look at four bishops carrying the reliquary shrine, which is surmounted by a canopy. Two angels holding an incense burner are walking at the right-hand side. The obverse shows Rupertus and Virgilius holding the model of the new cathedral. 1682 saw another major event of the Catholic Church of Salzburg. The old monastery Rupertus had chosen as headquarters celebrated the 1,100th anniversary of its foundation. It goes without saying that the most cherished of the church's relics were carried through the city in a festive procession on that date as well. We see their givers here. The records which attest to the existence of the relics of St. Martin of Tours at Salzburg date back to 1020. Here he is, with a goose at his feet, which is the Austrian equivalent to the British Martelmas beef. He's followed up by St. Vincent, whose relics were acquired around 900. Relics of St. Hermes were a souvenir that Archbishop Louis-Prom brought home from his visit to the Catacomb of Hermes in Rome in 1851. And the Pope himself presented the remains of the martyred couple Chrysanthus and Daria as a gift to the Salzburg Archbishop Adelwein. The lion by Daria's side does not refer to her martyrdom. Quite the contrary. The animal is said to have protected the holy woman when she was sent to a brothel. Only a few decades later, the golden age of the Catholic Church was over. The Enlightenment prevailed. Relics became something to sneer at. The prince bishops stressed their secular office. This coin of Francis Anthony of Harach is a splendid testimony to the mental change. There are no saints anymore in the coin imagery. Coat of arms, insignia, and a simple legend. This is all it takes. The portrait of the prince bishops increasingly replaced St. Rudbertus. However, Leopold Anthony of Fermian expelled the Protestants from Salzburg in 1731. Contemporaries considered his actions a crime against humanity throughout Europe. 20,000 families were forced to leave their homes without any kind of compensation. One-fifth of the refugees lost their lives. It comes as no surprise that a great number of medals were created which condemned the actions of the Archbishop of Salzburg, but commemorated the help of the Protestant princes, just as our piece does. On the obverse, we see an emigrant family wearing the characteristic Salzburg costume. The reverse depicts an angel showing the castle of Zion, representing the heavenly realm to a refugee. In the 18th century, Salzburg looked very similar to what today's tourists are accustomed to. The skyline included the Salzburg Cathedral and the Hohen Salzburg Fortress in the background, with St. Peter's Abbey, the Franciscan Church, 
and the college church at the right-hand side. The archbishopric's days were numbered, however. The French Revolution challenged the fact that a Catholic bishop was disposing of secular power. In Salzburg, Archbishop Hieronymus of Colorado faced open hostility as well. A testimony to that is this 1790 Convencionsthaler, which is known to numismatists as Leuventhaler. The Bavarian duke did not like the lions that supported the shield. Lions were connected with Bavaria, and he did not want to share this symbol. He objected, and Colorado melted down almost the entire emission. Only seven specimens survived. Just two examples were offered for sale during the last 100 years. One of these two will now cross the auction block of Kunkka. We, the Auction House Kunkka, would like to invite you to our Autumn Sale 2015. If we have sparked your interest with this film, we cordially invite you to join us at our Auction Sale 268 on September 30th, 2015. Please do not hesitate to contact us should you have any further questions.